Well, hey, hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today, we want to export our song at the proper level. We want to send it out to the streaming platforms and have it arrive with a little bit of oomph to it, but hopefully not score any penalties. We can do this in two clicks and we can do it for free. I'm going to show you how. Let's get to it. If you're just getting involved with mastering and exporting, this is a great technique that you can use because the results are guaranteed to work and they'll sound fine. If you're already a good mastering engineer, this is a good way to test to see if your work was solid. And if you're a master master engineer, this process really shouldn't do anything at all to your master. Not a bad way to check it, though. Let's get into it. So we're going to open up Audacity. Audacity, and I'll link it below, it's free. It's an open source recording platform with some fantastic tools. And there's some reasons we chose it, mainly because it is proven to be accurate and probably more so than any platform that you're currently working with. And as an example, I've imported a song before I learned really some of the ins and outs of mastering. I had mixed and mastered this song. And when I exported it out of Ableton, I clicked on Normalize. And let me show you what that did. Normalize set the loudest peak that it detected in the song. And we can see it right about here in the recording. It set that to 0 dB. That's great. It's a great level. But if we're talking about loudness of the track, we actually have to look at it two different ways. Not only am I reaching that zero dB, which I am, but how loud is the actual track? Here's the process. So up top here, we see some tabs along the top in Audacity. We're going to click on Effect. And one of the first selections that you see is something called volume and compression, and that gives us a few choices. We are going to go to loudness normalization, and this is different than the type of normalization in Ableton, which is peak normalization, or what they call here, normalize. This is a little bit different, folks. So when I click this, what I see is some settings here, and I have a choice of perceived loudness, We'll set the measurement to LUFS, and honestly, if you prefer working with LUFS, there's really no reason to, and we'll talk more about why you don't really care. The best effect you're going to get is if you choose RMS. For a normal, I do alt-rock, indie, pop stuff, set this to negative 12 dB, and for your best results, just keep this checked on treat mono as dual mono, which they recommend. All you need to do then is select the entirety of your song and hit apply. But I'm only going to do this to a portion of the song so we can see what it actually does. And you don't have to wait for it to render necessarily. It will just apply it. So keep your eye on the meter. When I hit apply, boom, my selected section just jumped way up but none of my peaks went over 0 dB. What did it do? Well, let me give you a little sound snippet of just prior to that effect, and I'm going to let it play through, and right about where this marker is that I'm indicating, that's where we applied it. Let's give it a listen. Let's hear that one more time. I heard the volume come up. But the peak never changed. Gonna save you. You take your time. All right. And that is trick number one. Let me show you now trick number two. For step two, we're going to follow almost the same instructions. We're going to go up to where we find effect tab on the top here. Click that. Again, we'll go to volume and compression. 
but this time we're going to choose limiter. Now, when I click on limiter, we're not actually going to use it really the way a, a limiter is normally used. We're just going to have it set the actual output level, but it does a great job of it. When I'm looking at this, my settings should be this. I keep my gain boosts at zero. I figure my track's already loud enough after the other process, so I don't have to mess with these. Set it for hard limit, so it will actually set a limit. And here's the trick. Limit to dB, you can set this for negative 0.1 dBs. So one-tenth of one dB, but that's enough for this thing to do its job. And on the question of apply makeup gain here, just say no. When you have everything where you want it, click apply. And it's very hard to see, but these peaks just got reduced by one-tenth of one dB. Let's give it a lesson again and see what we got. Okay, so we still have that nice volume, the loudness that we're perceiving here. And let's take a look at the meters up here. Now, we found these meters to be among the most accurate across any of the DAWs or any of the metering systems that we found, a variety of plugins, a variety of DAWs, and across platforms between Windows, Mac, and Linux. This was tested by users uh, that we set forth to make sure this all works. Now, when I see this happen, the meters will get hotter right at that moment, but the peak lights will not stay lit. Let's give it a listen. And I didn't see any red blocks light up and stay lit. And that means I did not actually hit a peak of zero. Now, just for fun, let me shut off that little tenth of dB that we applied in the limiter stage. I'll just hit control Z. Okay, now watch the meters. This is only after the single process of the volume normalization without the limiter. You take your time little red blocks. And we can see those red blocks, meaning that at some point it did detect an actual zero dB being hit. As to whether a human can hear that or as to whether that's a problem, if you're going to a streaming service, they might detect that and they might actually lower the volume of your track. If we use a limiter at negative 0.1 dB, we're not going to set off any triggers at any streaming platforms. In other words, we're in control of the actual level of our own track. And how do we know this stuff works? Well, the guy who came up with it after about three months of research, and here he is, that's Oren Fisher, and he's from Canada, so you know he's honest. He tested all the meters on all the different platforms in a variety of DAWs, and he sent files out to other professionals in the industry on Mac and PC and Linux, running a variety of different meters. And you know what we found? Weirdly, the accurate one was the free one from Audacity. And it was really the only one that was accurate across all these different platforms. Hmm. If you really want to watch us nerd out about this, we had a Zoom call, and it's available right here on the video channel. I'll put a link below where we discuss this with seven different producers across a variety of platforms and get their feedback. It's over an hour long, and you really got to be a glutton for punishment and really want to nerd out. But you know what? It is fun. Go watch that. But in the meantime, I will just tell you, this you can trust. And no luffs were harmed in the making of this experiment. We got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it.